This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 7, Linear Combinations and Vector Equations. Our objectives for this lecture are to compute a linear combination of vectors, find solutions of vector equations, and determine whether a given vector is a linear combination of given vectors. Before we get into the topic of this video, I want to say a few words about how we talk about solutions, systems, and matrices. It's important to be precise in our language. When we use words like solution, consistent, variable, and so on, all of those words are talking about a system of equations. However, when we use words like pivots, rows, columns, and so on, those are talking about the matrix. This distinction is important because, as we'll see soon, not every matrix is an augmented matrix representing a system of equations. Relationships among vectors can be investigated by forming a matrix with those vectors as its columns, and matrices can also be considered as algebraic objects themselves. Now into the definition. If we have vectors v1, v2, all the way up through vp in Rn, so let's first understand that notation. So that means that the v's are vectors with n entries, and there are p of them. So the variable p represents the number of vectors that we have, and the variable n represents the number of entries in those vectors. A linear combination of those vectors is any vector of the form c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 plus 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 etc plus cp times vp for some scalar c1 through cp. So the c's are scalars, the v's are vectors, and we're forming the scalar multiple of each scalar multiplied by the corresponding vector and then adding up the results of those scalar multiplications. The scalars are called the weights in the linear combination. Let's look at some examples. If u is the vector 0, negative 3, 5, and v is the vector 1, 4, 7, then we can form the linear combination 2u plus 3v, which we can compute here is 3, 6, 31. So that's one example of a linear combination of u and v. What would be some other examples? Well, we could choose the scalars negative 3 and 0, so that would give us the linear combination negative 3u plus 0v, which works out to be 0, 9, negative 15. This illustrates that the scalars are allowed to be 0, as well as negative. In fact, we could choose both scalars to be 0, and in that case we get the linear combination 0u plus 0v, which works out to be 0, 0, 0, also known as the 0 vector. Let's look at another example. In this case we have three vectors that each have two entries, so the vectors are p, q, and r, and one example of a linear combination we could construct is negative 1p plus 0q plus 1 half r, which works out here to be negative 3, 4. Again, let's think about what some other examples could be. We're allowed to use decimals, we're allowed to use positives and negatives, any scalars, any real numbers can work here. So in this case, we've computed the linear combination 0.3p plus 0.7q minus 1.5r, and again, you can see the arithmetic here, that works out to be 4.9, negative 13.4. And again, as before, we're allowed to choose zero for each of our weights, and in this case, again, that works out to be the zero vector. Now, a vector equation has the form x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus plus and so on, plus xp vp equals b. So on the left hand side we have a linear combination where the weights are variables, and on the right hand side we have a vector b. So a solution of this vector equation would be a value for each of the variables that makes the equation true, that makes the left hand side equal the right hand side. For example, let's consider this vector equation. So here we have two vectors, 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, 0, negative 3. We could think of those as being v1 and v2. And we have the vector equation x1 times v1 plus x2 times v2 equals the vector 4, negative 1, negative 6. And so that vector 4, negative 1, negative 6 is our vector b from the previous slide. So we ask the question, does this equation have any solutions? In other words, are there any values that we could plug in for x1 and x2 to make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side? Well, if we work out the linear combination on the left-hand side, multiplying the vector v1 by the variable x1 and multiplying the vector v2 by the variable x2, when we do that, we get an equation that looks like this. Now, how could it be that those two vectors are equal? Well, the only way those two vectors could be equal is if each entry of the vector on the left equals the corresponding entry of the vector on the right. So that means that 2x1 plus x2 would have to equal 4, negative x1 would have to equal negative 1, and negative 3x2 would have to equal negative 6. And that's a system of linear equations. If we set up the augmented matrix corresponding to that system of equations, that looks like this. And you might notice that the three columns of this augmented matrix are exactly the three vectors that appeared in the original vector equation. 
Now we can solve this system of equations in the exact same way that we've learned earlier in the course, and when we do that we get the solution x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 2. So in general, we can solve a vector equation that has the form x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus 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 xp vp equals b by setting up and row reducing an augmented matrix and where the columns of that augmented matrix are the v's in the equation and then the augmented column, the last column, would be the vector b. This gives us two equivalent questions. The original question for example 3 was whether the vector equation that you see here is consistent. But another way of asking that question is whether the vector b, in this case 4, negative 1, negative 6, is a linear combination of the vectors v1 and v2. And in general the two equivalent questions look like this. We can ask whether a vector equation is consistent, or equivalently we could ask whether the right hand side vector, the b vector, is equal to a linear combination of the v's, v1 through vp. Let's look at an example. So given two vectors v1 and v2 and a vector b, the question is, is b a linear combination of v1 and v2? So as we've seen, the equivalent question is whether the vector equation x1 v1 plus x2 v2 equals b has a solution. That vector equation looks like this, where I've substituted the vectors v1, v2, and b into that formula. And as before, we can set up and row reduce the corresponding augmented matrix. You see the augmented matrix here and its reduced echelon form. Now looking at that reduced echelon form, how do we answer the original question? Well, we look in that last column, and we see that there's no pivot in that last column, and so the vector equation that we started with is consistent. But then we have to go back and answer the original question. The original question didn't ask about a vector equation being consistent, it asked about the vector b being a linear combination of v1 and v2. So the final part of our solution to this problem would be to write yes, clearly answering the question, b is a linear combination of v1 and v2. Let's look at another example. Here we have vectors w1, w2, and w3, and a vector b, and again we're asked, is b a linear combination of the vectors w1, w2, and w3? So again we write the equivalent question, which is whether the equation x1, w1, plus x2, w2, plus x3, w3 equals b, whether that equation is consistent. The way we answer that question is by setting up and row reducing an augmented matrix. So we write the augmented matrix, and then we row reduce it using our favorite technology or row reducing by hand if we like. And again, we start by looking in the last column of this augmented matrix. We see that there's a pivot in that last column, which means that the vector equation that we were working on is inconsistent. But again, we should go back and clearly answer the original question. The original question asked about whether b was a linear combination of the w vectors, and so since the vector equation is inconsistent, we can clearly state that no, b is not a linear combination of the w vectors. So you should follow this structure when you write your solutions to these kinds of problems. You shouldn't just set up and row reduce an augmented matrix, you should precede that row reduction by rewriting the given question in terms of an equivalent question about a vector equation. That vector equation will correspond to an augmented matrix, which you can then row reduce. And then you should analyze that row reduced matrix, understand what is it about that row reduced matrix that tells you anything about the original vector equation, and then clearly answer the question. If it asks you about a vector being a linear combination, you should clearly say yes or no and explain your reasoning. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.